Hi, I'm Marcel James. Welcome to The Pulse. Today we're going to talk about Fisetin, a supplement that kills zombie cells or senescent cells. Now, I really encourage you to watch this video to the end today because there's a lot of information that I collected. I did a deep dive on this topic, and the more I looked into it, the more interesting it became. And I consider some of this stuff just essential to not just the anti-aging community, but to people who are sick and interested in health and the aging community, who people who are already very old, people who are recovering from cancer. There's a lot of people that this impacts and it's happening very quickly. This topic is just exploding. Now, the other reason I want you to watch to the end is because we're gonna announce winners of the Spermidine giveaway, two winners. Uh, I wanna also give away two Fisetins today. So someone's gonna win Fisetin, someone's gonna win Fisetin. That's another thing we'll talk about in a second. But uh, I'm gonna name the winners and I wanna explain the process for choosing them. Now it's just a random scroll, but then I look for people, names that have people who have posted often maybe. Um, none of these are specific reasons, but they are all they can all contribute to the success of winning. There's a couple methods that you could take. You could post more often, you can reply to other comments, you can post things that have substance meaning. So the first question is, how to pronounce Fisetin? So I went to the Google machine and the first one that came up was pronunciation guide. So how do I pronounce Fisetin? Fisetin, Fisetin. Okay, two syllables instead of three. That, that was a curveball. I didn't expect that. I decided to try another one. So let's listen to what Wordbox has to say. Fisetin, Fisetin. All right, we're getting nowhere in a hurry here. Um, what about how Jay say? Fisetin or Fisetin. All right, as my old boss used to say at Sweetwater, we're clear as mud. <laughs> Let's consult with Dr. James Kirkland at the Mayo Clinic. I'm going to discuss a lot of his research in this video. So how does he pronounce Fisetin? The other agent that we're looking at in early trials is Fisetin, and in some of the trials we're comparing Desatinib and Kersetin on the one hand to Fisetin on the other. Okay, it's Fisetin. Well, I don't know if that's just doctor speak. You know how you can't read their handwriting and they pronounce medical terms differently than the rest of us. Maybe it's that, maybe it's really fizetin, uh, quercetin instead of quercetine. I, I really don't know at this point. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna call it the F word. <laughs> um, but what is fizetin? Um, It is a flavonoid or a polyphenol and it exists naturally in things like strawberries and apples. And what does it do? Why are we talking about it? Why, why is Dr. James Kirkland interested in it? Well, it turns out that Fizetin is a senolytic and it kills senescent cells or what's referred to commonly as zombie cells. And these cells become zombies. They no longer self-replicate and they kill the cells around it. They act like cancer. As a matter of fact, patients who suffer from cancer have higher concentration of senescent cells. It begs the question, do they have a higher concentration of senescent cells because they have cancer, or do they have cancer because they have a higher concentration of senescent cells? Can we reverse the effects of disease by eliminating or killing off these senescent cells. And that's the job right now of Fisetin to kill off these zombie cells. And it doesn't actually kill them off. It basically makes them commit suicide. They kill themselves. So uh, it's quite interesting uh, how that works. Uh, and it works really fast, which makes it a perfect candidate for these human trials. And so what's happening is at the Mayo Clinic and many other places, and we're talking about the mainstream of mainstream science, right? Uh, University of Texas at San Antonio, their health center. Uh, we're talking about the Cancer Institute. We're talking about Wake Forest University. And of course, let's get back to talking about mostly the Mayo Clinic, but a lot of these places have tons and tons and tons of trials. I mean, it dwarfs what's going on with NMN from a human clinical trial standpoint. They have really fallen in love with Fisetin, Fisetin, and basically senescent cells. It's become the hot thing. There's more and more evidence in the testing with mice and other animals, in fact, every animal, that, well, one, it extends lifespan by 10% on average, which is great, but it also extends health span. The equivalent of decades, 10 to 20 years longer, uh, the equivalent for human beings. They're giving this in these human trials to very sick people. 
people who basically have no other options, people who are very frail. Typical candidate would be like an 85 year old woman who can't walk very well. They give them these senolytics and six days later, their frailty scores improve. So this is really dramatic stuff that we can get immediate results with. The other way to look at this senolytic is in the long-term accumulation. It takes 10 to 20 years to accumulate typically enough senescent cells that you uh, can become sick, that you contract disease. So there's two ways of looking at the senolytics or things like fisetin. I say things like fisetin because quercetin is another flavonoid that has similar effects. Now in the, in the trials that they've conducted, they are uh, testing quercetin together with a drug called desantinib. Now, it's crazy to me that they're doing this, but you know they're trying to look at it from multiple angles. I think they're trying to appease the pharmaceutical companies by saying, well, we're going to test drugs too. But they can't test the drug because it ha alone because it has too many side effects and it doesn't kill enough zombie cells. So they have to give a flavonoid with the drug. So everything is DNS or fisetin. Uh, the fascinating thing is quercetin actually treats the side effects of desantinib. So you're giving people this pharmaceutical. It's just crazy to me. They can't get off drugs. They're just so addicted to prescribing drugs. They're, they have to give you a polyphenol plant molecule to treat the side effects of the drug. I'm focusing most of my attention on fisetin. I just can't pronounce it. That's the thing that we can take that seems to be the most healthiest and less harmful. Now, Dr. Kirkland makes it very clear that he's not recommending that healthy people take this. I think he's protecting his own reputation, and I think that they just don't know enough. As with all of the supplements we discuss here on The Pulse, we're not going to know for 10, 20, 30 years the actual impacts and the implications for humans, because humans just live so much longer than mice and we're different than mice. So we're really not going to know, but the preliminary results from the human trials is one that it's been safe thus far. Again, we're, we don't know about 20 years from now. We won't know for 20 years, but so far it's been safe in the indicators that would tell us typically uh, are there side effects, are there downsides to taking it. Currently, we haven't seen any. Um, but there are two types of senescent cells. There are good senescent cells and bad senescent cells. So the bad ones are the ones we want to eliminate. So the way that they're approaching this is these uh, senolytics, they work in a very short period of time. They work quickly and then they stop working relatively quickly. So 10 days, 14 days, you're getting your senescent cells back. So we're not killing them off forever. And in the test, they're doing what's called a hit and run approach, which I've often referred to as pulsing, or you could call it pulse and pause. Hit and run approach in these trials, most of these trials, other than the safety trials, which are ongoing, they take it every day. Um, most of these trials for these various diseases are given for two or three days, and then you stop. And then a month later, two or three days again, and then you stop. Some of them are every two weeks, but the concept is, and they're given in very high doses. So the concept is kill off the senescent cells and then let the body sort of recover on its own and that there are long-term and short-term and long-term advantages and implications results from, it, from killing off the senescent cells. Another way you could do this is to do a three or four day water fast. A lot of people who do a water fast for three or four days report feeling really good after a few days. And the theory that I'm promoting is that that is because you've killed off a lot of senescent cells. And these things bog us down. They, they cause inflammation, they zap our energy, they do cause disease over time. And uh, they're just unhealthy to be collecting in our bodies too much of. Why we collect them probably has to do with our diet. We're still not eating healthy enough. Um, so there are other ways that we can reduce senescent cells by eating healthy, by exercising more, by sleeping better, all of the things that we talk about in general. However, we just can't do it fast enough. You can't tell a patient who's 85 years old. You can't prescribe her a three or four day water fast. It could 
be the end of them. You know, psychologically, I don't think they can handle it. You, you just couldn't do it. It's not feasible. Same goes for younger patients who are recovering from cancer or chemotherapy. It's not a practical solution. There are more downsides than upsides, but you can give them this plant molecule and then in a more harmless way, address it, but a very natural way, address these senescent cells that way. So these cells build up over time. These senescent cells build up over time. And now the question becomes, should you be taking Fizetin? Should I be taking Fizetin? I'll be 58 in December. I am very healthy. I wasn't healthy five years ago, but I'm very healthy now. But I did try two weeks ago taking Fizetin, Fizetin, and I felt great. I felt like I had done possibly a three or four day water fast. Um, I was actually shocked because the effects of supplements typically mostly take time to notice. NMN for me was pretty immediate. You know, two days I started to feel something. Uh, two weeks I was definitely noticing feeling more energy. CAAKG was also very similar, very immediate. But most of these supplements that I do take, I take on faith and the science and uh, the research that's been done. So I was stunned when I took Fizetin and felt great right away, like hours later, like two hours later. Um, it was, you know, if a half a bottle of wine makes you feel drunk after an hour, uh, then Fizetin makes you feel great after an hour. It's, it, and it gets in your bloodstream in 45 minutes. So it's that quick and it wears off pretty quick. The way that this is approached is that you are given in these human trials higher concentrations, higher dosages, actually 1600 milligrams per day for this two or three day stint. And typically there's four or 500 milligrams in a dosage, the do not age one, which we're gonna give away today. These are 400 milligrams. So I'll have to take four of those pills for two or three days, which I'm gonna do next time. I'll take a couple in the morning, a couple in the evening. I often divide my doses out over the day simply because I don't know, I'm just kind of paranoid sometimes about taking as much as I take. I am a scaredy cat a lot of times about this stuff. I'm very skeptical and, and nervous, but the science is very compelling. So again, first of all, I want to thank Otto when we talk about uh, comments. He made the comment referring to this research. I went and looked up the research. He didn't mention the Mayo Clinic by name, but I was able to then find, oh, that's where the research is. And so that's how important these comments are because he sort of suggested, should you be taking this every day? Or, you know, some of the research says once or twice a month. And I, I agree. You know, Otto, you were right. Otto posts a lot. And um, Otto, I hope you win something one day because uh, this is really good uh, information. Should you be taking this at all? I, personally, it's just that's just something you're going to have to decide. I don't want to wait 10, 20 years to find out I should have been taking it for 20 years. I'd rather try to do it in as harmless a way as possible. Um, and I felt so good. That was an indicator for me. So the science is good. Organisms are living longer, they're living healthier, and um, I feel great taking it. So these are kind of the indicators I personally look for whether or not I'm going to take it. Another point to keep in mind is the frailty improvement uh, is happening and the life extension improvement is happening with older mice, the equivalent of 75-year-old humans. And they're still getting the benefits. They're getting the benefits. So it's that fast acting. So that's something that's really interesting about this one. Again, I'm not going to wait till I'm 75. I'm going to try and start taking it now. Hopefully see some improvements, uh, continues improvements and uh, no side effects. But so far, so good. One thing I found really interesting when I was researching all this stuff is I've talked about this in a previous video, a recent video. NMN, about 20% of the people don't feel the benefits, but 80% do. They feel what I'm feeling. What if that 20%, what if you need Fizetin? What if you have a buildup of zombie cells? So you could find out really quickly by taking Fizetin for two, three days. And if you feel better, and if that rush of energy happens for you, that might be the ticket. That might be the explanation. So the good news is you wouldn't have to take it a super long time to figure that out. You'd know really quickly. Some people have taken an amend for three, four months and they wonder what's going on. You, you guys might have too many senescent cells. This is really common. A lot of diseases. It's very widespread. 
you know, it's cancer, Alzheimer's, osteoporosis. There are many, many issues uh, associated with these senescent cells. So very, very, very possible that 20% of us have too many of these. And we need to address this as well as boosting your NAD levels. It's not enough on its own to overwhelm all of the, the impact and inflammation uh, from the zombie cells. Let's announce the winners of the last giveaway uh, for spermidine. It is Jason Badeau and it is Jill Sierra. Both of them had really good comments. They were positive comments, but that's not necessarily, uh, you're gonna see people who have skeptical comments win as well. But those two jumped out at me. I've seen Jason post more than a couple times and Jill just had a really nice post. It was somewhat random. I was just scrolling and then I saw their post and I thought, I said, you know, this person should try spermidine. They deserve it. They made a really good post. They added to the discussion. So think about that when you're posting below. I fully expect to be talking about Fizetin a lot more going forward. We're gonna talk about some of those trials that are coming out. Some of them have been completed, especially the animal trials. Some of them are ongoing. Some of them have preliminary research that has been released already. Be sure to subscribe, like, again, comment on this video, but subscribe so you can keep up with this ongoing and developing story about senescent cells. Thanks for watching. See you next time.